jack in the box, you know. Okay, Bravo Audio SP1. I believe Bravo's first speaker amp. And it's a hybrid tube. So the tube here, here's tube. Tube is the pre. In fact, let's shut it off for a second. Tube is the pre. And then there is a solid state 20 watt per channel tube. Here's the components and there's all the connections. And of course, I've got the wires here, which I, I had a thing where I was selling the wires back in the day. And then I, it just became too much work for me. But now I have a friend who's sort of like, hey, I need a way to make some extra money. So I'm like, well, do you want to make speaker wires? And I'll just have people buy them through you. So possibility of future rebirth of the wire, which are dual 12s, nine gauge total. Insane. They don't make your shit sound any better. I promise you that. But my God, do they look amazing. Now, back to the Bravo audio. So... It is a tube, not amp. I don't want to say it's a tube amp because the amp's here somewhere. And this is the pre. The pre means volume control, how it's, how it's you know, taking the signal or the signal because it has dual inputs and we'll get to that in a second. And then, you know, running it through the magic of tubes, the magic of tubes. And then feeding that out into a nice clean digital amplifier. Now, one watts per channel isn't a lot. Uh, you know, that's just what it is. However, things like my TEC over there, the 101A, are also 20 watts per channel. And that costs about $100 more than this does. That also has digital inputs and stuff, so, and a remote. So it's a balanced thing. It's a balanced thing. If you already have a tube amp, like I have the dark voice there, and that dark voice there has pre outs. So I send signal, and the signal right now is being fed from the XDA2 actually into the DBX box because I have all the adapters to convert it from XLR to RCA. Love this thing. And so the signal's coming here. It's going into the RCAs. It's getting tubified, slightly tubified. And this will support two different types of tube. I'll read it off the uh, Amazon page so I get it right. Uh, it supports either the EH922 tube, which I believe is what it's in it now, 6922, That's that, there's a switch here, see the little switch? You could use that type of tube, or you could use a 12AU7. Again, I have no idea what the hell that means, but you flip that switch and you could change the tube to a different style of tube. $200. Two left in stock as of right now. Hopefully they get some more in before Christmas, as this review might probably come out before Christmas. It's gonna be close. I have quite a backup forming as far as reviews to come out. I don't want to have a, a thing. I, I want to read one, one. Visible components are an immediate conversation starter. I laughed out loud when I read that. That's just, that's, you run out of bullet points, quick make one up. Okay, so yeah, I mean it is, look at it. Wow, what's that? I like this amp. I really like this amp. It's $200 though, and for 20 watts a channel and a solid state, you can get an SA36 for like 50 bucks. So is this $150 worth of more money? And there, for the looks, maybe, maybe, no, maybe, yeah. You know what else? Two sources, RCA, which are on the right here. They're not back here, they're here, which is sort of like, Shit. You get some right angles, I guess, if you want to really keep it clean. But you get your RCAs on the right, and you got a 3.5mm input. I thought it was a headphone out at first, because I was one of the first to have this, and that the instructions weren't out yet. So no, this is an input, and it's a mixing input. The music we were hearing... Did this just die? Did you die? No, you didn't die. Okay. So why don't I hear you? Oh, because you're off. So it's a mixing input. So if I have this on and that on, both will play. And right now, this is off. I wanted you to hear the on process for this thing, which is why I just shut it off. And again, Z wires are really stiff. So we've got signal coming from here. This is paused. Volume. Again, we've got the JBL Studio 230s up because I. And with the sub synth on this, it's even sick. Okay, half volume, ready. Source is playing, it's in.
There's a hissing. There's a buzzing. We're waiting. A tube's warming up. You guys. So that's the tube warm up process and length. And now that background buzz is sort of fading down. It'll take probably another 30, 40 seconds before it's gone. So yeah, the tube is doing things. It's not just like the Bacano OST. The tube is doing things. It's, it's, it is tubifying this. I, I had these speakers set up. I had them on, what's, what's the, uh, the little SMSL I had, the A2. I had the A2 here. All right, let me switch over to the Bravo. I was like, oh, it's got the tubey sound. Little little baby bit of tubey sound. Little little more. I mean, the imaging is great. So it, it's even though you know I have the balance control here, which is another reason I love the go rack. So I I could have adjusted left. I'm sitting back with these massive speakers, and it's right there. There's the imaging. So the tube is at least this stock tube is you know perfectly balanced. The bass is. Not withdrawn, but not exaggerated. God, I like, I like what tubes do. But you have to know what tubes do. And if you've never had anything good, then it's sort of like, well, you know, is this as good as it gets? The Galgamech vagina is three feet wide and filled with razor sharp teeth. Or spikes or something, yeah. Maybe that's all you know, it's the Galgamech vagina. So this, this could be that. It's nice to know the other things. Is that popping out? No, that's the way it's supposed to be. So, back to this, where it plays both sources. I'm gonna lower that. So, now we got this playing. We're mixing in some of that. So in reality, a lot, you know, I get these questions a lot. I get a lot of really like, hey, I want to do this, this, and this, and this, and this. And can I do this and this without this and this? And I'm sort of like staring at, at the screen, wondering if I should just throw that, just delete that, block this user from my account. I don't want to answer these questions anymore. And one of the things people want to do is they want to mix two sources at the same time. And a lot, I want to say a lot of things don't do that, but most things don't do that. The TAC doesn't do that. The Jotunheim doesn't do that. Nothing, nothing does that. But this does that. And I'm not going to 100% say that it's supposed to mix them. This could be very bad what I'm doing where both are playing, but it doesn't seem to be screwing things up too bad. So $200, a little pricey. So you got the solid state component, that's 50 bucks, 60 bucks maybe. And then you got to worry about, okay, you want a tube pre, so if you went on and got another Bravo, and I don't know if any of their Bravo stuff has, they've got a ton of stuff, like hybrid amps, but do any of them have pre-outs? Or would you, you could just use the output for the headphone into the thing, and then you'd have a tube sound, the thing. But then you get the mixer bit involved, where you can actually mix two sources. And if you wanted to buy a legit mixer to just mix two sources, the cheapest one you're gonna find is gonna be 40, 50 bucks. It's gonna be a Behringer. So then you're stuck with, is it sort of starting to make sense, the price? Because now I'm starting to make, I have to make this make sense for me as well. It's like, mm, I don't know, dual source preamp tube with the solid state, and it does look like that. I mean, that's, that's very pretty. God, these cables are thick. I was using this on my turntable. I have a turntable in my bedroom, and I'm like, all right, I, I just set this up. Let me get a... Uh, an amp for this and I picked this and I have two different uh, turntable preamps and I was testing them into this and then I'm like alright but now you know I want to put this around so I use the auxiliary input from my player and I was like wow this thing is useful it is super useful it has like a 25 second startup time but that's sort of cool guys like that thing they like they would love to get into their car and have to prime it like, like, turn the crank. We miss the crank turns on our cars, and then we hit the button, and it just goes, boom. Yeah. 
I'm not 100% on the volume control in this. It works. It obviously works, but it's it's very fast. I'll explain what that means. Can I get this to come back on? I'm going to raise the volume of this fully. I'm going to lower this down all the way. Leave that paused. Unpause this. Let's get a nicer song or a louder song. Louder song. Okay. So And there's clipping. So you can clip and it will just go, uh, no, and then mute. So you've got to really, it, it gets, it gets like a, the loudest it should get like there, like 11 o'clock. And then from here to here to the end is sort of like, am I really gaining anything but distortion clip? So. And that's loud, by the way. This 20 watts per channel in a big, efficient set of speakers is plenty. This will do a room. But there's a reason that the DB bot, BD, yeah, go, uh, bat is here. And it's because I don't want to fiddle with this knob. I kind of, I, I like it. It works. I like that it works. I wanted to try the, the sub synth on this. By the way, these get hot. Like rocket hot. Like fa hot. So be careful with that. Don't go lifting it up and reviewing it like this. But if you keep this down, keep your keep your source a little bit under max. Like if you're running your PC straight into this, or a DAC straight into this, just take your master volume down to like 80, 70%. And that'll give you a little more room to play with the volume. Because a full signal, which is what I'm getting from this at 32, or from this if I crank this to 99, that's a full signal coming in there now. And now... Hmm. Yeah, that's as loud as it, it's like... It's about as loud as it ever needs to get. Oh, okay, you're pushing it. Oh, and then it's going to start to, to distort after like there. So, that's the nature of tubes, man. Tubes and digital amps, I really can't touch those. Those are insanely hot. Put a little fan on that. There's nothing else to look at. About this. Here's your power. It's got a power brick that's sitting somewhere on the floor. Power brick, spring-loaded speaker connectors, very hot uh, amp things right there. Just hot. Here's your switch for the different types of tube. And I don't want to switch it with this tube because it's not now. Here's your RCA inputs, and they just sort of like, they just are right there. Oh, I don't know if this is just my unit, because I got a really advanced unit from them, but the left and right are plugged in backwards here, because it, or else it would be backwards. And that could also be, you know, me plugging into there, and, and then not seeing, because I had to reach around. But just keep that in mind. Just make sure left is left when you get this set up. Three and a half millimeter input in the front. I do like. Can I mute? I can mute that. That's another reason I like that. Power switch is just a little dip. There's nothing on the left. I like this. I like it. I do like it. It doesn't have a headphone out, and it's a shame because, I mean, you could just. Remember what I did back in the day of the, with the Mini X where I just had the, the, the actual speaker amp that was wired into the headphone out? And you could do that with this. I just don't know if I would recommend it. Because 20 amps, 20 watts is a lot to shove into a headphone if you're not prepared for the consequences. Lower that. The tube doesn't get very hot. Tube gets look warm. Tube warmth. These get hot. Those get hot. So, I mean, for what I'm using it for right now on this desk, I think this is perfect. You want to add a little bit of tube, a little bit of tubiness to a set of speakers. This is perfect. This is just enough tube. And you can swap it out with different tubes. And I really should just get a collection, like a, like a toolbox that I open up and it's just tubes from different parts of the world with their little flags hanging next to them. 
Does Cuba make tubes? Are there Cuban tubes? They've got to. That place is still old school as hell. I know Russia still makes tubes. I know China makes tubes. Japan, if you want to spend like $8,000 a goddamn tube. Oh, cheap RCAs. I loathe you. So yeah, this is this is done. I like this. Two hundred dollars on your desk. You want to do mixing? You need two signals play at once, and you got a desk set up. This is it. This is literally it. Unless you want to buy a mixer, an actual mixer, and you don't need the DBX Go Rack, but I want it. Don't judge me for my musical tastes. Yeah, I'm impressed. I'm impressed by what this 20, 20 watts, maybe it's pushing a little more than 20 watts. I don't know. Maybe it's clipping at, at, at 35, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I'm, again, I'm, I'm just guessing. But... Oh, before I forget. Go watch the Neon Demon on Amazon. It's the guy who did Drive. If you haven't seen Drive, go watch Drive with, with that sexy hunk guy that everyone wants. He got me pregnant watching that movie because I was like, oh my God. I can't remember his name. Whatever, Drive, 2011 Drive. Because the next movie the guy did with him again was uh, Only God Forgives, which was really out there. And it was like, wow, I'm glad I saw that, but I have no idea what happened. And then the, this Neon, the Neon Demon is an Amazon Studios production. So it's available on Amazon. If you have Prime, you can literally go watch it. Like, boom, watch this movie. And it's got so many dislikes that I've just stopped reviewing what I'm here to review. Shut that off. Just irrele irrelevant. And now let's talk about the Neon Demon. Because... It's one of those movies that you sort of like, here's your movie life before you've seen The Neon Demon, and here's your movie life after it. And it's it would have never made it through Universal Studios or Fox. None of them would have gave, gave them the money after they read the script and saw the preview and like, what? You want to do, you want to try to, what? No, no. But Amazon said, fucking do it. Do it. N Nicholas Riffin, Wing, I don't know. Winding... Nicholas Rending, Winging, I don't know. I'm babbling now. Point is, it's got like 45% one star on Amazon. Totally doesn't deserve that. Jay Bauman from Red Letter Media gave it his second best movie of the year pick. And I'm inclined to agree with him for the soundtrack and the visuals alone. And then you start really getting into the analysis of it. And it's just like, <sighs> I'm trying to get my friends to all watch it while high. I want to see if they can even function afterwards. I'll link to that in the description too, just for fun. So yeah, this is the Bravo Audio SP1, which is a very uninspired, uh, no, that's, that's that. It's a very uninspired name for a thing, but it's a hi-fi tube hybrid thing with no reviews. I should review it now because I should, that's it. So buy this, buy the speakers, and then sit with your monitor in front of you and watch the Neon Demon, and there you go. You're, you're completely done for the year.